Welcome back to some professional StarCraft 2. Let me introduce you to one of my favorite players. One of the most relatable. From Korea, it is the People's Terror. In the blue, it's Kier. Now, before I introduce this player, I just got a quick question. What's your favorite uh, genre of music? I don't know. Uh, classical? Dubstep? Leave it in the comments. Because mine, personally, is Ragnar Rock and Roll. Shut up, Jimmy. It was worth it. At a best of five, Terran versus Zerg. Between two of the scrappiest players, I'm expecting a lot of drama, mistakes, macro, and massacre between these two. And hopefully, you enjoy those things as well. And if you do, it'd be awesome. You could like and subscribe. Jimmy, what are we... Yeah, I, I know it was bad. 1,100... One and 42 likes. If we get 1,142 likes on this video, on this cast, well, I'll cast another video. And uh, I'll probably do it anyway. But thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. Hopefully it's about to get a little bit better. Uh, but a three-per build out of here will start things out. Not a particularly... Um, in fact, it's become by far the most common open. The ability to continue to dictate the pace of both the incredibly slow joint paying queens off a of creep. Uh, just constant scouting information makes it a lot easier to spot an early roach all in. Can be particularly vulnerable to bailing bus if you do end up losing the reapers early on. But lends itself, of course, to that mass barracks marine style. Which, what Cure might not have in in micro compared to your marus or your beyonds or clems his macro pretty much more than makes up for as uh, no one is as diligent with their production as curious four marines at a time uh, off of four rags to start just mass stim marine i'm sure ragnarok knows this is a possibility a probability even the zerglings looking to pin the reapers but Obviously, the, the depots and, or the depot and the barracks, more than enough to give them a bit of a backstop there. Baneling Nest starts, but he, I think Ragnarok's confirmed what he originally suspected, which is Marines. Okay. The unit that has literally been never nerfed in StarCraft 2. Uh, one of the most microbal, if not the most microbal in the entire game. The most cost-effective in the right hands, and also pretty good in cures. Marines are still a force to be reckoned with. And the reckoning will be the form of Banelings this time around for Ragnarok. Not bothering with the lair, no upgrades, no Roach Warren. Just a whole lot of Zerglings, just enough drones. And whatever amount of Banelings he can put on the field. Alright, factory on the way, but Cure has, wow, 24 Marine timing. Only five minutes in. I like how we've regressed in StarCraft 2. Like, Beyond coming out with the 2-1-1 Medivac build was a big, uh, the meta, biggest meta shift since Beyond got Reapers nerfed. You're noticing a trend. Um, but now, we're doing Reapers into just Mass Marine. We don't need Medivacs. Don't need tanks. Nothing, nothing like that. Just Marines. Well, we'll have to see how it goes. How many Banelings? There's just four on the field. Is the target fire there? He's on creep. He stems. Combat shield finishes in a timely manner. The grenades split a bunch of the Zerglings. And Cure will use most of that stem to retreat off the creep. Will Ragnarok let him go, though? As without those medivacs, that overlord is in a... Does he know about the Ovi? Even if he does, does it really matter? Oh my god, I don't think he does. Ragnarok's Overlord is perfect here. Oh no, it's an absolute disaster for Cure! Hands around the back, but bounces the- Oh no! It's a massacre on the field! One more time, instant replay. I have to watch that again. We never get to see this. Thank you, Cure, for providing us this. The grenade bounces the Banelings into the Marines. What an absolute disaster piece of an experience there. Glad to see Cure back on the channel. 
All right, so Ragnarok handles that about as perfectly as you ever could. Uh, Ragnarok, contrary to his performances against Maru, who I think he, he in kind of understandably has a pretty massive mental block against, Ragnarok is one of the best Zergs in the world. And he's got a killer instinct that doesn't... It's a, he doesn't have the mechanical edge that Serral does, but he has a killer instinct in much the same way, but also very different than Dark. And right there, he committed all out to the Zerglings and the Banelings, kind of lulling Cure into a false sense of security, and then punishing him for it in the most dramatic possible fashion. Beautifully done here. And so many Zerglings, there is Baneling speed on the way, but he's just going for it. Cure splitting the Marines, but the target fire isn't there. The Marine count isn't there. The Zerglings are though. They're inside the house. He actually picked up some of the Marines and is dropping them out behind the wall. It looks like Ragnarok will be shut down. And even though it looked pretty bad, Cure is very much of the mindset. It's not about how many Marines you lose. It's how many you can build to replace them. And he better follow through on that because it has been a long while since I've seen 54 Marines. Wow. 54 Marines died to just 77 Zerglings. When you consider that, that Zerglings come out two at a time. Um, those numbers, well. The numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you. If you're wondering why Kira's the people, Terran, the people's Terran, I do hope this uh, this game one has done a lot to help explain it for you. But the focus is there. He's got the Widowmons on the way. Despite all his victories on the field, Ragnarok did invest a lot in unit production, and he hasn't touched Kira's economy. He hasn't slowed the third significantly, even though it wasn't particularly quick. He hasn't killed any SCVs, and he didn't get a huge amount of tech back at home. So, with no hive on the way, with inferior upgrades, despite slaughter... Oh my god, I've seen things. Despite slaughtering dozens of Marines, Cure is able to maintain that level of production. Because remember, a big part of, of going for the, the Rax build is you already have four barracks done. They're completed. Signed, sealed, delivered. Okay. Um, and, and you don't have to kind of build up that production in much the same way you would if you went for a 1-1-1 with a Barracks Factory Starport or even just a 2 racks build. So you have most of your three base production already online. And now we see that truly uh, starting to kick in for Cure. And the reason he's able to maintain this production against Ragnarok, who now seems like he has the rest of the map. I mean, look at this. Oh my god. He is starting to make a lot of progress. Uh, that is, there's still a widow mine down there. But drilling claws is done here. Methodically working his way through, knocks out a hatchery. Working around the edges, but the edges keep expanding more quickly than he can knock them down. That's what it feels like, at least. Hive starts, but 2-2 is about to complete, and Cure is actually in the slight supply lead. Uh, that wasn't true by the end of the sentence, but close enough. The Marines, 1-1 one, one versus 1-1. One, one. If they had an upgrade advantage, they can usually stand and fight, as long as they got their back to, to something that isn't Banelings or Zerglings. But, uh, three more wrecks going up to the Octo wrecks. And here comes another round of banks. We don't mind. Take it out. Metavax, pick it up. Here, gonna just use the mines. Ragnarok defusing them. And to be clear, defusing is throwing Zerglings at them until none of them have uh, missiles ready anymore. <laughs> Here has a tendency to, to kind of leave Metavax full of units um, and end up not having enough army supply on the field. We've seen the. Oh my god, Ragnarok. <laughs> A few creep tumors. <laughs> Where Cyril might be a surgeon, Ragnarok is more of a uh, graffiti artist. Cyril with like it, exactly two creep tumors to maximize my creep spread and maintain enough energy for transfuse. Ragnarok's like, 
<laughs> That's enough. <laughs> That'll do. Well, we're maxed out, and this is already shaping up to be the series I was truly hoping it was going to be. As both these players will be losing a lot of units, but building even more. At the end of the day, the War of Attrition will be entertaining at the very least. Oh, a huge attack, but the concave is amazing for cure. Loses almost nothing there. I guess he lost six Widow Mines at the start, but... 60 Zerglings down. More amount of axe. Hydra's on the way for Ragnarok here. He has no Vipers. Despite the mass Metavag drop plays out of cure, the Vipers are the big part of, of dismantling that Metavag count. Hydras are good. The Vipers with Parasitic Bomb and Abduct are even better. But Hydraling Bane is the choice. Creep spread looking good, but Cure just keeps finding opportunity. He just keeps adding Metavex until morale improves. He's got the 2-2. Two -two. That is too many Marines. You need Banelings. You need Banelings. I repeat, you need Banelings. Well, here they are. But it takes quite a while. Oh, the Spork Collar moves at the last. That's <laughs> real little late. Oh, another attack though. Widowmine obliterates a couple dozen supply. Oh, it seems like close enough. 70 to- so making up- more than making up for- Wow. At one point, it was 54 marines to 77 zerglings. It's now 95 marines to 326 zerglings. So, the- the numbers are improving here for Cure. And Ragnarok doesn't really have any hive tech besides upgrades kicking in. He didn't even get Adrenal Glands. Ragnarok, we've talked about this. We've talked about the last time I cast Ragnarok, he did not get Adrenal Glands for way too long. And he, he pretty much lost at least one game because of it. Adrenal Glands is like the concussive shells. By the way, does Kira have concussive? Of course he does. Or the combat shield even of Terran. Like, it's one of those upgrades that's easy to forget, but such a big deal if you do. And right now, especially considering the amount of Zerglings, that's a big mistake out of- Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> the planetary. Oh, one Baneling away from going down easily. 62 more Lings. When you're building four digits of Lings in a game, you need the best attack upgrade. The Adrenal Glands upgrade is better than any attack upgrade individually, and possibly better than all of them combined. I don't know the math on that one. 40% attack speed is, um, a lot, though. Especially against Marines. Those Marines- What? What? <laughs> especially against Marines. <laughs> they won't die! God, 3-3 was done against just 2-2 two -two there, and you can really see it. Even without Metavax. But Ragnarok still has 86 drones. Massive economy. E economic advantage. And here come the Lurkers. Yep, sure got a Ghost Academy. But does he have the ability to deal with Lurkers? You really want the Ghost out before, but he doesn't know about the Lurkers. And also Ragnarok isn't building it. So, no Widow Mines, he's trying to drag them into the Terran army. They're just as dangerous. Oh, losing some of the Metavax. Cure running into the corner. The Marines are running out of real estate here. And they pop into the Metavax. Another army. More mines. Oh. An exhausting game thus far. 15 minutes, right? Grounds lost 22k resources. Here, 15. Yeah, those numbers are really starting to look a lot better for him, though, aren't they? All right. Well, seismic spines complete. Widow mines all over the place here. Here, retreating. Banelings closing in. Couple Widow Mines, though. Mm, hitting both sides. Down goes another tank. I gotta keep pointing out those Adrenal Glands, Ragnarok. Meanwhile, another attack overruns the field. Cure supply is obliterated. 120 and plummeting. Cure loses on both fronts. The Banelings are far too much. The Widow Mines turned against him. And Ragnarok just rolls him here. In game one. Wow, that felt like a seesaw, except uh, at some point Ragnarok just pushed really hard on the seesaw. 
and and knocked Kier off. And then when Kier was on the ground, he threw a bunch of banelings at him. So we really brought that all together there. But just a brutal game one that I think really sets the tone for this series. They're going to be throwing punches. Many of them will miss, but plenty will land. I can't get over that initial marine attack, though. That was... <sighs> the people's terror. <laughs> uh... That's how... It, that, that, that is why he's the people's terror. Because that's what it looks like when I try to do Beyond's builds. It's like, oh, I'll just move out with 20 marines and no medevacs. And I'll just target fire the banes. Mm-hmm. Sure. Keep telling yourself. Reapers again as we head to Gresvin. Hmm. Adrenal glands, Ragnarok. I mean, he won the game. So. Doesn't mean he couldn't have done better. Imagine if he had adrenal glands for another couple minutes. Where did Kira go wrong? Really, the problem was Kira never really got... He, he didn't exert the map control he needed. Widowmines... The way Maru uses Widowmines, especially against someone like Ragnarok, is not on the field, but in drops. Because the uh, APM, like the attention, just generally required to deal with Widowmines, is usually significantly greater than the amount required to execute like a mine drop. So Maru will almost always have one medevac of mines kind of just going around, especially if he's a little behind, which is rare, but um, just to keep... And if one of them hits, well, you're not behind for long, but... You're using them on the field where they can be used against them, which can work. But it doesn't really, really deal with the source of the problem, which is the sheer level of production. Brenda getting bullied over here by the Reapers, as is the customary early game ritual, where Zerg gets punched in the face. Okay, not punched. It's more like a flicking of the ear kind of situation most of the time for long enough until they can finally start to strangle the Terran. Um, which is... Uh, Feels feels solid after that, I will say. Ragnarok got to that point earlier, I'm asking. Alright, more bullying. Well, <laughs> bit of a Brenda bounce there. Whoa! I feel like that's the noise I should be making when I see a queen do that. So, Ragnarok is one of the few players I've seen really dedicated to mutalisks. I brought that up. Just in time, all right? I said, let it be known. Let the record state I started that sentence with that intent. Okay, he's not going mutus. Never mind. I, I strike it from the record. I think, well, it could be mutus, but the point is he's on two bases with now three gases and a lair on the way. So that uh, already sets the tone. But there's also a Rotorin. Roach speed builds have also... Cyril has been uh, co-opting some of those. I'm, I'm giving Dark credit, all right? Do Beyond and Dark get credit for every build for Terran and Zerg? No. But in some ways, to an extent, yes. So, uh, Dark definitely the first player or the most common player to, to use Roaches. Uh, on relatively low economy against Terran, even in the modern day. But uh, it is still a viable strategy, especially against someone who's only making Marines. Marines don't... Roaches have a base armor built in. And without medevacs, which, here we go again, mass Marines. Without medevacs, the roaches will kill them quite quickly 
and the War of Attrition will easily go towards the Zerg. Yeah, I don't think Ragnarok's going to rely on the Banelings winning the day again. He stims some of the Marines. That's permanent damage, or at least near permanent, as it's very unlikely. The medevacs will come out by the time those Marines die at this rate. Oh, another Overlord. Oh, no! He scans to kill the Ovi, which is quite a thing. Ragnarok actually supply blocked right now. Does he have enough roaches? 11 roaches? Eh. Eh, that supply block hurt a bit. I, it should be enough. Especially considering some of those marines are bruised. If they stim. Well, um, it's not good for their health. Usually medevacs are enablers for that, but uh, they aren't out yet. Ragnarok is only at 42 drones as well. He is quite committed. Where's the speed? Okay, 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 okay. It's, it, it's done. It's done. Stop. No angry coaching. These, the players who have won hundreds of thousands of dollars. No, well, the Reapers are very dead. Um, incredibly dead. Yes, there are different, like, tiers of it. Well... The wall off. We'll hold for now. There's a siege tank on the way, but... The roaches with a great concave. He goes for it. Um... Well, Marauder pops out. That's gonna be helpful. Kind of sidestepping. Well, actually, Marines are quite good. Okay, well. Yep, that was more than... I even cancels the bunker. Medivac comes out. Apparently, that was... That was plenty of Marines and Marauders. Looked a little dicey for a moment, but I think Ragnarok was, uh... It, it felt more obligatory, that attack. Like, I have all these roaches just sitting around, like... <laughs> don't want to just sit here while he doesn't have medevacs. But now that he does, defense is a priority. Wow, cure. Wow. Building a missile turret like he's gonna get burrow move roaches. And you know what? He might. But I like how he slaps down that roach attack. He's like, mm, he's probably going to do some cheesy roach move, burrow move, bull creep. So, um, Cure's thought process, so clear here. <laughs> and it's highly amusing. But, so now it's Roach Ravager with just plus one carapace, about uh, against one one. Medevac bio. Ragnarok filled in a bunch uh, of drones after the attack. But that economy hasn't? Well, it's starting to kick in now, but Kier's getting his third. Concave on the high ground. Concussive shells on the way. Siege tanks back at home with some chew toy depots set up in order to minimize the potential damage of the attack, especially if Ragnarok's not paying close attention to it. Drops headed up north. Anitis. Mm, four roaches, not enough. He's just going to drop on top of him. Marauder. Oh, he picks almost everything up and gets out. Drags the units back. Anitis is a bold move. Let's we'll see if it works out for him. Well, here comes another bite. Where are the medevacs for this one? No medevacs with this army. The one's up to the north, though, fighting it out. He's going to pick a good fight here. Medivacs winning the day. In fact, Cure seems to be winning on both fronts. There's over 20 supply of roaches in the production tab. Not delivered yet. Where's the tank going? There's a dog. Unrelated. What's up, dog? Well, catching some of the bio before the Medivacs are here, but unfortunately it turns around and chases down some of those roaches. Still, that drop hanging out towards the north side. Kind of anchoring Ragnarok's units. Marauder takes the wrong path. And the bio army, well, this could be kind of close. Knight is into the main. Ragnarok is maxed out. Despite taking mediocre fights, like, it's definitely a quantity being a quality all its own situation. And Cure has no vision at all. I think he actually saw it, 
but he was microing on the other side of the map. And now the Ninus comes through. There's not enough roaches in it to really make a difference, though. The tech, oh no, no, that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work at all. Except Cure had his tanks all stacked up, so you know what? It might work a little. I take, I take it back. I'd like to revise my statement slightly. No, that night this was a bit optimistic. Popping more roaches out. Okay, it did. It, well, it worked a little, but not a lot. So, not, not at all. Yeah, I don't need to qualify this. Those supply depots actually funneling there. The Plinko board of roaches doing exactly what it was designed to do. And the begrudging infestation pit begins. Hooray, oh, watch out, watch out! Unfortunately for Ragnarok, he was quite committed to the Nidus and the Roaches, and now Cure is gonna max out with two two siege tanks. Got a few Liberators on the way. He's got all the fixins here. He's heading towards Siege Tank Canyon on the other side of the map. And I am hard pressed to see Ragnarok defending this safely. Or at all, really. It depends on the execution, but. I think the most likely thing will be the execution of Ragnarok. Is it, while they both have equal supply, these armies are not built equally. Here's army is just way better here. He's about to have plus one mech weapons. He's got bio with plenty of medevacs. A beautiful spread. I can't believe it's not butter. And uh, the roaches are being blasted into oblivion. The bio army is covering all the weak points and the supply. Well, two Gs tell the story better than the supply itself. Ragnarok is knocked out and the series is all tied up. He tried the roaches. I think they did okay, but the main failing of roaches, which is just their intense mediocrity in the mid game. Uh, the Ravagers they need a lot of finesse for being such. Uh, they're like sumo wrestlers, all right? They need to be deceptively fast and agile. And uh, by their very nature, they are not. So uh, it takes a strong hand to control them. And unfortunately for Ragnarok, he wasn't flexing quite hard enough there. And that brings us all tied up to game three. And... This back and forth series here finding his footing against the roaches. A similar style, honestly, almost exactly the same uh, opener into mid game. Just siege tanks more more commonly than whittle mines to deal with the roaches, but otherwise uh, incredibly similar. Then again, Terran builds haven't really changed since like 1998, so uh, I wouldn't expect too much different. But in game three, a different build. He is going with the one racks on the high ground. One racks expand. We'll see what the follow up is. Interesting. This is a map where you do have the ramp to the natural, making it um, a part of the reason for the two racks is kind of setting up a wall at your natural on especially maps where there is no ramp, where there isn't that built-in defensive capability. So, uh, now I don't necessarily think that's the main factor in going for the Threeper build, but just kind of a happy side effect. I am interested to see what Kier brings out of his non-Threeper build. Ragnarok, on the other hand, Thing. So far, that was about as close as we got to a cheese, those mass roaches. But again, it was kind of dictated by uh, what Cure was doing more than, I think, what Ragnarok wanted to do. Going in, looking for the drone. Drone pops into a spore crawler there. Can I look for another? He gets it! He didn't have the mi Wait, he did have the minerals. He just didn't make a spore. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. The Zerglings actually slip by the Reaper. We're heading towards the natural right now. We will see. There's two Marines down here, though, unfortunately. Will he actually deny? Okay. He cuts the ribbon on that command center SCV. Um, 
and I mean, he finished the command center, so job's finished. And that's what matters. Chasing down the uh, offending Zerglings, wanted for murder and for being not Terran, an even greater offense. Very quick lair. Out of a three minute lair. What now? He's not getting any more gas. And he I think he's gonna at least pretend for a third. He hasn't started a Is this a Muta rush? This I think it's now oh no, the Well, the Reaper gets in, the drones are hunting. The Reaper getting in is really bad for Ragnarok. That's that's not good. I don't <laughs> Seeing the lair, seeing the gases. Oh, that's not ideal. I think it is indeed. A Mutalisk crush. So, against someone who's not going Mass Marine, which is in this case, Kier, uh, for the first time, the Spire could have more success. But... Unfortunately, that Reaper getting it, that's such a huge deal. Because it's unlikely. Yeah, he just gives up on that. Well, I guess mission accomplished. The Overseer is for scouting what Cure is doing. Cure just kind of shows him everything. Of course, he does lose the Overlord, which is annoying, but mission accomplished, I guess. So, yeah, all units are accounted for here in the early game. And the follow-up should be pretty clear to Ragnarok. Uh, it's going to be... Marie. <laughs> Spire. Mainly nice on the way. Ragnarok obligated to build a few Zerglings here to deal with this. Double NG Bay for Kieran. He's not gonna have that much like Ragnarok has enough gas for seven mutas. Not a bad start. Especially considering the additional racks aren't even really up yet for Cure. Did he just did he actually finish reactors? Oh, he used uh, his factories and his starport to make sure he had that production, which means the marine production looking good assassinates a queen. And the medevac continues to make its way around. Here come the mutas. Just in case you weren't sure. Can he kill one of them? Doesn't quite get the lock on, so no kills on the mutas. So now we see if Cure has enough to zone them out. Because the best defense against mutas is a good offense. But Cure doesn't really have the ability to go back out on the field here. So, I'm gonna kill one SCV. Delay. Oh, wait a second. Some marines. Targets down one Muta. The badly bruised one. But he's just fighting here. Mutas continue to make their way through. And Cure not able to really stop this before it gets started. And that means the damage will continue adding up. And tries to come in the, the well-positioned turret, though. Marines continue to ward them away. In fact, Ragnarok threatening the marines themselves without medevacs. There's a chance he can pick off the smaller groups of them. No plus one flyer attack on the way, though. Notably here. Yeah, he's lost two of them. He's building a lot of mutas for someone who is not getting any of those flyer attack upgrades. Which are the way you kind of make mutas into a fighting unit later on. Otherwise, they are a bit of a liability. But Cure is really struggling to make any progress. His supply is continually hamstrung here. He lost a surprising amount of SCVs. Yeah, seven down to the mutas. Well, maybe six, and then there were, the, were those Zerglings earlier. Third. Mutilus. The drones are also here, which is for moral support and also a mistake, but... Oh, no. 
Ragnarok. He's got 85 drones, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Cure is working on 2 2. Cure's gonna try to just max out. The closer you can get, the better. As it's unlikely that Ragnarok's going to be able to get. Um. To Hive Tech, to Lurkers, to anything like that. And a maxed out 200 supply army will likely outright beat Ragnarok's 200 supply army, just like last game. But the Mutas are a lot more useful at preventing that from happening. All right. The Mutas do a great job of uh, either dragging the army back or forcing you into an awkward base trade. On top of that, it's not Road Ravager. It's going to be Lang Baneling. And Banelings have had surprising success in this series thus far. Picks off a tank. Oh, he's a bit deep here. Oh, that's... that's uh, he's, only, he's lost five of them. Oh, Drilling Claws, though. That's a big upgrade. Though, I don't think he has any Widow Mines, awkwardly. About to get a Thor popped out here. The Mutas just continuing. Working their way through. Though the missile turrets are doing a number on him as well. He's just adding two, three more. Cure getting closer and closer to that 200 supply infestation pit. Out of Ragnarok, who's now acknowledging that indeed he may need more than just mutas as time goes on. He loses a few more. He's lost 14 thus far. And now... Uh, we have the moment of truth. Can he hold the counter? 2-2 two -two is about to complete. I think if Cure is going to move out, now is pretty much the time. It's not going to get any easier as Ragnarok has taken most of his side of the map. It looks like he's content to sit back and, and let Ragnarok try to fight into him. Well, 2-2 two is done now. There is a Hydralis den and a hive on the way. And if Ragnarok gets to lurk as well, Ragnarok, here we go, 200 supply, gonna fight directly. We don't mind, could get a huge, yeah, well, the Thor holding it down. Cure, let's Ragnarok open up the bidding here. And that fight does not go great for him. Two Marines with 36 lanes and four Mutas. So that's, uh, at least he didn't continue it. I'm just trying to sneak by. Drilling Claws is now done. So those mines. Um, more scurrilous than ever. Muta's doing what they do best, which is running away from confrontation. And by running, I mean flying. And by confrontation, I mean the idea of interacting with anything else. So at heart, I'm a Muta. Aren't we all? 200 supply apiece. Here we go. Yet again, I, I keep saying it, but Kira's just sitting back. He knows Ragnarok has a tendency to, to jump the gun on these attacks here. That Ling Bane army. There's 63 Banelings on the field. Ragnarok is, has about as strong a Mutaling Bling army as you can get. But he still is not getting adrenal glands. Ragnarok. Ah. All right, simmer down, simmer down. Jimmy. Uh, oh my God, I'm so upset. I'm just gonna throw my microphone on the ground. Jimmy, pause the game. What do you mean it's live and we can't pause? I know that's a lie. All right, we're just gonna hold it like this for the rest of the cast. Hopefully it doesn't sound terrible. I'm not fixing that now. Here's fighting. We do it live. We gotta put the noise filter back on. All right. Feel all old-timey newscaster. Thankfully, we already have someone spectating, so it shouldn't be too bad. Mainlings rolling in. And down goes the planetary. 39. A bit more banelings on the way as cure oh this feels so weird all right well we're gonna we'll do it live here a bit supply blocked but at 190 supply he's got 126 on the supply 
so and some of that is Thor. So that's so many banelings though. We got 56 banelings on the field, but plenty of marines behind those Thors. Just enough widow mines in order to keep them busy. And well, the the Thors. Ah, no, he gets one. Lurkers on the way. Huge Ling Bane army chasing him down. Where are the widow mines? Turns it around, drops the Thor in front. Banelings rolling through. Cure. Not able to stand his ground as Ragnarok rolls in. And there's just too many Bane Links. There aren't enough units to stop him, and Cure gets overrun yet again. The Muta's creating more than enough space. And at the end of the day, the Widow Mines are not gonna stop this. Game three goes to Ragnarok, who knocked out not only Cure, but I think it just sheared off there, which is, you know, okay. Uh, like and subscribe so I can buy a fancy looking mic stand and not look. Honestly, I've used this same kind of setup since uh, many years now. Does that mean it's bad? No. Terrans have been making Marines since 1990. I can't, ge don't gesture with the mic in your hand. Other hand. Um, Terrans have been making Marines. I'm not going to try to fix this right now. They were committed to this bit. It's not really a bit, it's more like um, two bits, which is really the, you know what, we'll try for a bit. I think the screw is stripped there, but that's, all right, just give it a nice little twist to the wrist, if you know what I mean. Yeah, get it up on there. Hmm. And, well, until the next big baneling attack or forgetting of adrenal glands, it should make it, so. Um, let me know if you want more, uh, uh, WWE host winter. That's the first thing I think of that. But meanwhile, Jimmy, what am I paying you? I, okay, metaphorically. I didn't. Game four. Ragnarok holds a two to one lead. As Cure unable to regain map control. After a devastating. Well, the Mutas. It felt like Cure didn't didn't really capitalize on any point in that match. Even though he had the 200 supply, had the 2-2 advantage, just didn't end up making the difference. Cure once again going for the one racks expand as opposed to um, the threeper build. He's had uh, honestly more success with the threepers. I am very surprised. Sometimes I, maybe the issue was that Cure spotted the potential mutas so early. It's kind of like seeing a dark shrine where if you know about it too soon you can actually over defend and end up getting further behind than you would if you were just reacting to it it's not quite like that as dts with no detection are uh game ending but it is a similar feel to uh, if you're building too many missile turrets uh as opposed to units themselves you're not gonna be able to turn it around again ragnarok not rushing out for a third we're only two minutes in Okay, so a third base is not necessarily uh, required at this stage. Or even particularly common. The economy, the economic game, such as it is, has shifted back towards heavier two-base aggression for both sides. Uh, as we see the, the quicker Spire, the quicker Roaches, uh, a lot of two-base play out of Terran, with mostly Marines... But also, uh, occasionally see your help bat timings and stuff like that. There's the two CCs, though. It's gonna be three in total from Cure. Falling back to the three CC with the one, one, one. Well, I'm assuming he built a star point. Creeper jumps up. And is politely yet firmly asked to leave. Starport on the way, Lair and Roach Horn. 
as Ragnarok heads right up towards that tier two tech. Another roach speed rush. That leaves the option open for Mutus, but it does look like he's committing to the roach speed here. Reaper goes down. He adjusted from last game. Two queens, two zerglings, that's enough. A cyclone. A cyclone, not a bad choice against a potential nidus as well. And adding on a bunker. All right, well, he's incredibly suspicious. He didn't see the lair. So right now, Kira could be expecting just a, a essentially a hatch tech roach aggression. The cyclone and bunker not going to be as helpful against the mass roaches, you'll see. Uh, off the two base, well, two to three bases, but this is all he really has right now. As uh, there's three command centers and three production facilities, so not too much on the field at all. Loads up the medevac. Locks on. Overlord tries to get away, but... Well, medevac almost lets it go out of vision range, but finishes it off. Cloak, Banshee as well. A good safety option, having a Banshee. Drops out. Gonna try to snipe off a queen. Doesn't actually quite get it. There's not any other units here, though, awkwardly. And the Cyclone's starting to do real damage. Forces out of Transfuse. Even picks up that last Marine. Very diligent. And Roach Ravager on the way. So it is revealed, by the way. Very importantly here. The Roach Ravager revealed... But what is there at home? Well, very important. A Banshee. That Banshee puts a timer on all of this. There are no Ravagers with it. The SCVs are pulled. The Roaches just kind of turn around. He's just giving up on the whole idea. Doesn't even try for the bunker. Cure. Honestly, I think Ragnarok, a big missed opportunity there. He's chasing down the, the Medivac. But a Kier only had half a dozen marines at home in one bunker. So a dozen or so roaches easily could have taken it out, even with... Contaminates... Of all things. Why, why not the NG base? Okay, well, cool to see contaminate used. A bit odd to use it on a barracks of all things. Um, but the tactical group will pause that production. Usually a bit more effective on, on you know, almost any other building, but... The idea is there. All right, maybe this game he'll even get adrenal glands. I'm still on about that. It's still important. The double cloak banshee. Oh, I think Ragnarok just didn't even factor it in. Oh no, Cure's delayed cloak banshees have been devastating. Like they're so slow, they become good again. Cure in a nutshell. <clears throat> banshee, well, does end up losing both banshees, which is far from ideal. But kills 11 drones, which... Oh, watch out! <laughs> uh, 11 drones actually puts Cure significantly ahead in worker count. <gasps> Get up! He's... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, 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 God. Oh, that was close. Almost landed it. Well, thankfully for Cure, he's able to keep it intact. Can't really afford any major losses here as the Roach Ravager is still a potentially deadly threat unless you have a critical mass of bio. He's gonna go drop the rocks in the bone trench here. Try to slow things down even further. 1-1 one, one is on the way. 1-1 one, one for Ragnarok is still a long way off. Now rocks. A lot of geology happening. Both players excavating. The bio army car... Combat shield still a little far off here, but I don't think he's going to be able to punish the Roach Ravager. We got the Zergling and Baneling speed on the way. Hive has started as Ragnarok is all over the tech tree right now, branching out more like a shrubbery at the moment. Armory going to complete 
though. 2-2. Two, two. Ragnarok could catch up somewhat with the 2-2 two, two time. Another set of rocks gonna be- He actually didn't finish off the rocks on the other side. Which is a bit odd. The non-zergling speed army. About to complete. I've nearly done. Taking down all these rocks. But the stim? Pull the units away. Gonna keep control of the creep spread here. But Cure is nearly maxed out. Nine minute max out. For Terran. With 2-2 two, two and a fourth base. Not even a particularly greedy early game. He did go 3cc in Fortnite, but... Maxing out with Road Travager, still impressive, but less so than uh, the Marine Marauder. And Cure's ready to go. All right. Jacked up and good to go. Adreno Glams for Ragnarok, unfortunately, and not going to kick in in time. And also, Zergling's going to have a real tough time getting anywhere close to this army. That is so much Terran. Oh my. Hatchery just melts under a hail of high velocity negotiation. Ragnarok trying to make mainlings, that one larva, tanking harder than the entire hatchery itself because of its almost infinite armor. But already the siege tanks are jammed into position. The mainlings are gonna try to roll through. Blinding Cloud actually could make the difference here, but he doesn't get it on the back line. Oh, he just barely misses the perfect fight, but it might be good enough. Here is standing his ground, but he's about to lose his Marauders. Those Vipers out of nowhere made a huge difference. Blinding Clouds absolutely cutting the effectiveness of Cure's army down significantly. If he just had one more, he could have crushed that fight instead of just won it barely. But didn't quite get there. Cure is reminded how important it is to have ghosts. Builds a ghost academy. About to finish 2-2. Ragnarok managed to turn it all around, though. And, uh, back towards the center. It was trending heavily towards Cure. And now, I'd say it's about even. As Cure does have a comfortable four bases, plenty of production. But Ragnarok still has 76 drones. He's got the Vipers out. He remembered Adrenal Glands. Which is already, you know, that's a win either way. You know, winning is good, but learning is even no. You don't get prize money for learning. Otherwise, the YouTube commenters will be rich. Uh, at least according to them. Like and subscribe. Corrosive bile. Um, almost certainly a misclick as he was trying to spread his creep, which had the same hotkey. <laughs> Another command center. And uh, what other tech? Just the Hydralis Den here. No Lurker Den yet. The Roach Ravager chasing back the drops here. That Cyclone is still alive. All right. It's it's one pebble away from death, but... Spore Crawlers rooting and uprooting. There's a couple Vikings and no way to deal with them right now. Which is quite awkward. The Vikings looking for an up. Oh, the Blinding Cloud doesn't come through in time. He's looking for another one. He doesn't get it. The Blinding Clouds are just a little too short. Just a couple Vikings with no anti-air to stop him. And Cure is easily able to crush the front of that fight. He really needed those Blinding Clouds. He kept committing. He knew it wasn't going to work out, but he tried it anyways. And now Kier has regained a lot of momentum. There's almost no creep spread here. No Hydras on the way either, in order to help deal with those Vikings. Just a, just a couple, but it made all the difference. Knocking out a Viper before it could do anything. The Lings and Banes trying to close in. Upgrades are even. Adrenal Gland's done. But... The bio army with siege tanks support and plenty of medevacs. If you don't outright kill them, they're gonna come back at full HP moments later. 
It's been a costly game for Ragnarok. He's got maybe one more fight here. As ghosts are on the field now. There isn't a particularly great army to deal with them either, but the Vikings... Oh, good blinding clouds. Are they good enough? That's the best he's gonna get. The Banelings are rolling in. Cure retreats up to the high ground. Oh, and you shall not pass, says Cure. Oh, that high ground is held by the tanks. The ghosts might not survive this, but the tanks almost certainly will. The Viper spotted. The Vikings actually hunting the Viper. As there's no- Oh, a Hydra! Oh, the Viking! What a chase! Oh no, no! <laughs> Loses the Viper! It's a disaster! Oh no. Knocks down a Liberator. How many meta? 13 Metavax. Ragnarok is holding on, but the creep spread is non-existent. Cure just needs one, not even good fight, just an okay fight. As at this point, he has the right units for the job. Ragnarok trying to come in from the north side as well. But the army is too much. It gets a set of corrosive bells, knocks out one tank, gets a second. The Roach Ravager from the north. There's not that much bio underneath. Okay, there's enough. There's enough. More Banelings rolling in, corrosive bile dodged. Reinforcements coming through. Eight barracks, two factories, and a reactor to starport. That keeps Kier going as he continues marching forward. A couple more medevacs might go down. The Liberator stalled out the Hydras at the back. High sec auto track, he is nearly done, and Ragnarok is going from bad to worse. We're going to game five. Ooh, what a series. These two evenly matched. The Roach Ravager, again, not, not working out for Ragnarok. The Mutaling Bling, definitely more his style. And Cure is able to hold it down long enough. Though the real win, of course, once again, Adrenal Glance. Oh, um, so. Well, what do you think? How many barracks will Cure have on the map? Will they be in his base or not? Will Ragnarok deviate? Who wins in this surprisingly back and forth? Not surprisingly back and forth. I predicted this. All right. I suspected this might happen. Terran versus Zerg match. This microphone slaying, anxiety inducing, uh, brutal slugfest. Well, here we go. In the top right in the blue, the People's Terran. It is Cure. And in the bottom left, the Normal Zerg. I don't know why that's his nickname on Liquipedia. There was no citation. It was just said as his nickname. His other nickname is his name, Hebium, which I'm probably mispronouncing and the one he's using. But that's it. He originally changed his official ID to his name. And at the behest of his fans, um, he changed it back because they're like, Ragnarok was pretty cool though, bro. Like, <laughs> not everyone can be a Jade all. Where are you going? He's looking for proxies? Oh my, oh my god. No, not the gold. What? Okay. I've never seen this. It, it, this, is, this isn't something Zerg do. It's so easy to scout because of creep. And just in general, it doesn't make as much sense because your hatchery is your production facility, Zerg. But Ragnarok in game five, putting it on the line. I love it. You know what? This is such a game five build as well. I I approve. Okay, even if it doesn't work out, I I love the idea. And I don't think Cure is expecting it at all. Cure has no vision of it. He's actually floating his Rex here. 
to take out the Ovi. And he will succeed. Uh, or at least drive it away. He will kill it eventually, but... Alright, very annoying. Now the question is, will it, will it actually pay off? There's a not small chance that just a random unit happens across this base. Reaper is scouting. It's going to look very similar to the previous games. The previous games where uh, Ragnarok took a quick lair. In fact, that lair may be a bit of a fake here. I, though I wouldn't be surprised if he completes it, but... If he can at least zone out the gases. Kills the Reaper. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you cancel the lair, but... What is... Oh. The gold... Those golden minerals definitely lend themselves to mass roaches better than even the uh, rich Vespine geyser, I think. We'll see him cure. I just don't know if the having such a percentage of your production, having it be vulnerable and, and kind of cut off. That is why Zerg, unlike in, in Brood War, for example, don't usually do these kind of strategies. Is because that hatchery is such an important part of your production. And it's less likely you're going to have macro hatches and all that. Also, Nidus isn't quite the same tool it is. Oh my god, it's... Fjord definitely thinks this is some, like, two-base roach aggression. He's playing it very safe here. But that is the exact opposite of what he needs to be doing. Uh, little does he know. So far, beautifully done by Ragnarok. Roaches. Honestly, these aliens probably more for scouting than they are for any sort of real damage here. Oh my. Is he gonna see it? Oh my god. Oh wait. We're in the cure action camp. Did he see the creep? Did he see the creep? He technically saw the creep, but it's not even... Oh my god, cure. Cure. He didn't see it. Like, it's on his screen, but, like, who's looking at that? He caught the edge of it. If he wasn't staring at the Hellion, it's incredibly easy to miss. Oh, my. That little, uh, smoke screen there helping out a lot. So, Ragnarok, he should have enough units to be able to, uh, actually protect the base now. He's got full saturation over there. Oh, my God. I'm so stressed out right now. I can't believe a, a hidden base for Zerg is working. Because Cure's playing so careful not to get all in. And Ragnarok went with the greed cheese. Oh my. Hellion? Is he, is he looking at it? No. Did he see it? He's sending the medevacs out, but it's like incidental. Add-on complete. Here come the roaches. The roaches keeping him busy. I think he's gonna see it exit it. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, there you go. I'm still- yeah, I'm not- I'm still not convinced. I think this is- he saw the creep with the medevac. He's like, wait a second here. But it's now finally the time. Right now at 80 drones. It's now finally, it, it's almost too late. Well, you can go to the other side. Has he finished mining out? No, he's still far from mining out, which means this is a mineral wall. And the Marines can just gun down the drone, so they have great reaction time. I'm gonna get the spore here. This is very awkward because now he can just pick up and, well, there you go. Of course, there's plenty over here, but I think it's paid off. 
Only now is Kira starting to catch up economically. Yeah? It worked? Now will it be enough? As Kira still... Part of this is that Ragnarok did no aggression to Kira. Because Ragnarok essentially rushed four bases. So we had no opportunity. He didn't have nearly enough units to deal with this. Uh, so... Well, double drop in the main. Hive is on the way. It's just Zerglings here. Of course, he doesn't have plus one melee, so he's just fighting against the Zerglings and winning because those are Marines with 1-1. One, one. Two more medevacs coming in, but two Banelings. Drops out of I'll expect one of us in the wreckage, brother. Ragnarok still holding on. He does have to find a way to break Cure's tank position, and that way is very likely Vipers. He agrees. He doesn't have the gas, but I'm looking forward to seeing those adrenal glands once again, Ragnarok. I don't know about you. Well, well the Roach is going to get gunned down. Well, Roaches and Ravagers has to move around again. It's become a bit of a liability to this base. I think Ragnarok agrees. He's just sending the drones back. Yeah, he's, gi he's giving them the runaround here. Oh my. Another drop. Shut down. I don't want to try to make this difficult for Kira, but he's just abandoned that base as a mining location now. Hatchery goes down. The Medivac's taking a leisurely path past the Queens. To the back of the base here. Here, trying to keep Ragnarok busy because he has such a huge economy right now. Ragnarok looking very good economically. But he has to translate it into an army that can ideally attack before Kira has a fourth base established. And he's just now landing his command center. So he's got to deal with these drops. At least keep enough back to zone him out. And then set up for an attack on the fourth. Otherwise, settle in for a much longer experience here. And these drops are anchoring essentially Ragnarok's entire army back at home. Until they fly right over a Hydra and he loses a medevac of Marines. But there's more where that came from. Does he have... He doesn't have Hydra speed! Oh no! Or Adrenal Glasts! Not again! That's a lot of siege tanks. How many Vipers? Two Vipers. Hmm... Even the Unsiege tank's a real threat here. Here comes Cure. A real Terran army. Making his way down. So many siege tanks. Now, technically, it's only... Well, he's got 11 of them now. But the Vipers! Incredible blinding clouds! Stevie Wonder those tanks right now, and he's just not making magic happen. I don't... Well, the one tank that, that could see did a huge number on the Bane. Uh, well, it wasn't as uh, resounding of a victory as it could have been, I think. Cure is able to retreat with at least his medevacs. The blinding clouds were absolutely incredible. But even then, off of Crete, it was hard for him to pin down those bio units. It ends up being still a good fight for Ragnarok, but not... Uh, a, a game-winning one. And here come the Vipers, yet again. Looking for more. The Banelings trying to roll in. Blinding clouds on the backline tanks. Banelings just rolling past. Trying to find some Marines to hit, but the trickle-down is not gonna be enough. As Cure collapses. The concave right through the gates here. Here on every side of it. Easily able to dispatch most of those units before they got even close. Suddenly Ragnarok, no adrenal glands. Okay, stop. But it's still important, but still. He has 60 Zerglings on the field. The Banelings, the Siege Tanks, he is on creep here. That speed boost, very helpful. The Medivac's trying to help. Siege Tanks on the low ground and suddenly Cure. Has a significant supply lead. Ragnarok just doesn't have that late game capability here. Cure, keeping his cool, keeping his production up, 
standing his ground and driving the Zerg back yet again. And working his way in. The creep spread isn't here. A lot of the medevacs are, are badly damaged, but still feeling it, uh, healing at full strength. Oh, and the Vikings knock out one of the Vipers. Another one only gets a blinding cloud on a, at the front and a couple tanks. No lurkers, no more Vipers, and no more hope as the People's Terran turns it around. Ragnarok eventually gets ground down. I think an incredibly clever move there in the later game, but not good enough to make the difference. Ah, <sighs> cure with a real solid conclusion to that series. A bit of a shaky one to start things off, but he stabilized and Ragnarok, the Roach Ravager just not doing it for him. I'm surprised we didn't see more Mutas. Uh, even off that gold base, but definitely one of my favorite Terran vs. Zerg series. A scrappy experience. I hope you enjoy. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. If you got the means of motivation, you can buy a fancy mic stand or something. Uh, check out Patreon, YouTube membership. Otherwise, I hope I made your day a little bit better. Or not not otherwise, but like and or. You, get, you got it. Uh, thank you for watching. See you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill.